Twice a day, the carers take a boat ride to bring food. These islands, 60 kilometers from Liberia's capital, Monrovia, have become an animal refuge. These chimpanzees survived traumatizing lab tests. Veterinarian Richard Suna and his team now look after them. They were subjected to a lot of uh, um, invasive uh, procedures, which included taking biopsies. Some of the chimps we are, you, you're seeing here were probably in their lifetime, the time they're doing research, could have experienced about 400 biopsies, meaning 400, they were anesthetized 400 times, meaning they were terrified 400 times. 65 chimpanzees live on these six river islets off the Atlantic Ocean. But 400 chimps were used for laboratory tests by the New York Blood Center from the 1970s. The cages were built by New York Blood Center in the 70s. They got came into this country and took over for research in 1974. And they, brought, they started getting chimps from the hinterland. And those chimps were placed in those cages, two in a cage two-ish, a male and a female. Civil war broke out in 1989, lasting 14 years. The chimpanzees nearly starved to death as the country imploded around them. Only caretakers like Junior Cooper were left. The whole expatriate left and went away. So we remain here with the chimps. The local staff kept the animals alive out of their own pockets. They stayed on, even when in 2015 the New York Blood Center dropped funding. Animal groups and U.S. Bank City Group stepped in. The chimpanzees are unable to fend for themselves. You know, we cannot release them back in the wild because of all the tests that were done on them. They could, they could uh, you know, have a devastating effect on conservation of uh, other chimps while predators free-ranging chimps or wild chimps. Activists and Hollywood stars raised outcry. And in 2017, the New York Blood Center agreed to share costs with animal rights group Humane Society International. It's a big commitment. Each morning, the chimps need 200 kilograms of food, and at night, another 120 kilograms. The plan is to sterilize the males so the population doesn't grow. But chimpanzees can live up to 60 years. Some of those here are aged only about 20. This means that their carers will potentially have to continue to make the boat journey from the mainland for decades to come. Every Sunday, dozens of people gather in this church in Bukavu, in the Eastern Democratic Republic of the Congo. Here, Pastor Zagabu Cheruzo preaches the virtues of polygamy. The practice is illegal in the DRC, but not uncommon. Worshippers at his congregation, which calls itself the Primitive Church of the Lord, follow another law. According to the pastor, God intended it so to avoid adultery and immorality. Those who hunt us down, that's their business. But we must go to the end and show the people of God the truth, which is the teaching of polygamy. This means a man can marry more than one woman, although society is against it and people laugh at it. These churchgoers believe they are blessed by God and disciples of David, Abraham and Solomon, who all had several wives. Young congregants also say they won't mind sharing their husbands. I've been a member of the Primitive Church since I was born. I believe in polygamy as the word of God, and I believe that I can marry a polygamous man. This is one of Pastor Zagabi's wives. Here is another. Three of them live together under one roof. His fourth wife lives in Bujumbura in neighbouring Burundi, where her children are studying. The youngest wife is 26 years old, the oldest 48. They feel the community's disapproval. When I was still alone at home, I had a good relationship with all the neighbours. But when my husband got married to other women, all the neighbours caught contact with me. They all ran away. Nowadays, we only greet each other out and about, but they don't visit us anymore. 
That's how it is. The local Catholic priest believes differently and takes pains to say God does not condone the doctrine. C'est une institution humaine. Polygamy is a human institution that goes back a long way in our traditional African and Congolese culture, but it is not a divine institution. About 2% of the world's population lives in polygamous households, according to the US-based Pew Research Center. The figure is the same for the DRC, but rises to 11% across sub-Saharan Africa. Pastor Zagabi has 16 children. At age 60, he wants to marry again. The ideal number of wives, according to him, would be seven. Every morning, Immaculate Karahura finds her way to work with her white cane. The 35-year-old Rwandan lost her sight as a young girl. Today, she is a massage therapist. I love being a masseuse. When I massage a client, I feel happy. I feel like I'm interacting with my clients during the sessions, and that means a lot to me. Karahura learned to massage at Seeing Hands, an organization that has been training up masseurs for five years. It has given the single mother a way to support her two children. Rwandans consider us useless, incapable people. They think that we only survive by begging. Some of us are still forced to beg because we don't have the capacity to work and earn a living. I have met many employers. They say they will call me back, but they never do. Seeing Hands has now equipped around 50 massage therapists, all visually impaired or blind. While the service has become very popular among expatriates living in Kigali, few Rwandans come in, its founder, Beth Katonye, explains. So I started training them. And I thought that I would be able to place them in different uh, hotels and uh, uh, different places in Rwanda, but no one was willing to employ them at the time. So I had to go searching for clients for them and working with them. Clients appreciate the blind masseur's refined technique. So I knew that they have heightened senses than we do, and I was curious about the sense of touch. And I loved the, the sensation there's a bit of an intensity that I never had with somebody who's not visually impaired. The masseurs can earn around $100 a month and clients pay them directly. Eventually, Gatonye hopes to leave the organization's management entirely to visually impaired members. Yeah.